Today, we talk about patient hope. Hey there, welcome to the Five by the Fire podcast. I am your host, Armand Sheffy, AKA Pastor Fury. And I'm also the executive director of the Unshackled Network, a family of missionaries that exist to help the marginalized experience freedom in Jesus through equipping and empowering disciple makers called to the forgotten. Now you guys, on a, a little light note, personal note for me, I'm a guy who loves football. And ever since the year 2000, I've been doing fantasy football as a way to uh, further enhance my enjoyment of the sport. And most of those years I've done rather well to at least decent, except this year. This year I started off the season zero and seven. That means the first seven games I lost. And in our a league, it shows you the percentage that you have for potentially making the playoffs. And I was at 6% at one point, a 6% chance that I was going to make the playoffs. And you know what I saw when I saw that? So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, you guys know that that line from Dumb and Dumber. But for me, that is a line from my engagement with God that there's always hope. There's always this understanding that it, while I still have breath in my lungs, I have reason for hope, not just hope for better now, but I have the hope that I will continue to persevere and, and be with the Lord for eternity in heaven. Now, as we look at today's passage, one of the passages that we studied um, in the uh, McShane Bible reading plan today is Hebrews chapter six. And this, this chapter is one that really uh, goes into the hope that we have in Jesus, our great high priest. And uh, I love how it says in verse 9, it says, um, In your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. So he's saying, hey, 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 because we know you, because we know the life that you live, because we can look into the way that you've engaged with the gospel, we have sureness, like we have an assurance. We feel better about better things for you because of our thought about your future with salvation. And it goes on to first, uh, verse 10, he says, for God is not unjust as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end. So here he's saying, yo, we can, we can see the way that you've lived. We can see the, the love that you've demonstrated in the past and you still do. I think that's an important point. Because too often, as we think about our life with the Lord, I think we can sometimes look back at seasons of life where we really had um, a strong faith, where we really operated by the Spirit's movement in our life, where we've seen God move. And then we can we can ride that reality, that, that moment when we know something changed and believe that that really gives us the assurance that we have this hope of salvation. But I think it's wise to not be assured based on the past, but look at your life today. And he says, like I, you have shown for the, the love that you've shown for uh, his name and serving the saints as you still do. So it's important to look at where you currently are, right? What did Janet Jackson say? What have you done for me lately? <laughs> So it's important to look at not just the, your, your past record, but where are you currently at? Right now, my fantasy football team, I'm on a two game win streak. So currently right now, I am, I am leaning into that hope. I am moving forward and that hope is increasing, right? Because I'm winning. Are you winning with the Lord right now as you live out of his spirit's movement in your life? And then he goes on and he says in verse, well, and he said, oh, I, I hope that you um, um, show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end. So he's saying, persevere in that. 
Like, stay in that. Stay earnest in that love that you're showing so you can continue to have full assurance of the hope until the end. And he says, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience in her inherit the promises. You guys, that's that's what it is. We need that combination. If we want to have the full assurance of hope until the end, we need to persevere in that combination of faith, that faith and trust that God is going to do what he says he's going to do, that he's going to show up where he says he's going to show up, that all of his promises are yes and I am, right? That faith and patience. The patience to wait for him. The patience to not think that if he hasn't appeared in the way that we thought he would, the way that we want him to, that we would walk away. I I was engaging with a guy on Instagram the other day who had given up and said he was tired of of these promises of what's to come. He had lost. He, He hadn't simply lost faith, but he'd first and foremost lost the patience to wait in faith and that's what he's saying here that that we need to be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises and then it goes on to talk about abraham as being one of those and and i love that he says that the promise here when given by god is sworn with an oath and when we when we give an oath right we we are uh, swearing by something greater than us you know so you might say in the name of god i swear by da 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 Here uh, it says, for when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. Mm. He is the greatest of all. And in him, there is no possibility for a lie, right? And uh, then it says in verse 18, that uh, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us and we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain Mm. it's the promise of god that gives us that hope trusting in faith and in patience that he's going to do all that he said he's going to do gives us that hope that is the anchor for our soul. In times when winds and waves may blow us to and fro, the anchor for our soul is a patient faith that results in a hope that endures to the end. A hope that will be steadfast, that we are told to hold fast to. Mm. I wonder today if there are situations in your life that are causing you to question your faith or to grow impatient for his promises. I wonder today if you would decide again, not about what you did, but about what you do. Not about where your faith was, but where your faith is. Would you decide again today to hold fast to hope, to be patient, to persevere in faith and believe that God The one who can swear by no one greater is going to do what he said. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Hmm. That is your oath. That is your bond. Your word is bond. Hmm. We thank you that you give us a hope in Jesus. Hmm. That your spirit that you pour it out on us as it indwells in us, empowers us to persevere in faith and obedience, to be continuing to demonstrate love for you and love for others so that we can know with assurance that we have that hope. Lord God, help us to have that assurance today. Help us to persevere in the love that provides that assurance for us today that we will receive all the better things that belong to salvation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, go. Persevere in faith and in hope, patiently waiting on God today. And I'll see you back here tomorrow on Five by the Fire. Be blessed and be a blessing.